We're in Revelation 21. Okay, John 4, uh, this is a conversation with Jesus and the woman at the well. And then in Revelation 21, verse 6. And let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I do ask you to help us to understand this and help us to uh, enjoy <coughs> the Lord Jesus and to enjoy his word and help us to be faithful to your words and to be appreciate them and to stand in awe of thy words in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, John 4, you have the conversation uh, between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. And he says in verse 10, he's asked her about a drink of water and she's assuming the liquid H2O. And then he says this in verse 10, Jesus answered, said unto him, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So this time of year, people think about gifts, obviously. Um, People say, well, no, they think about Jesus. No, they don't. They think about gifts. That's what people think about this time of year. Uh, And the greatest gift is often the neglected one, the Lord Jesus. Now he likens himself in verse 11. He says, the woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Yeah, he is. Uh, Which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. And then Jesus answered and said unto him, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay, uh, notice there's a key idea in here is the word thirst. Now if you would, Revelation 21.6, Jesus Christ is talking here again. And these are the two greatest gifts uh, that are given uh, to uh, the world. Unfortunately, the vast majority neglect these gifts. In Revelation 21, 6, he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, okay, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Okay, notice in verse 6, there is a qualification of who he gives this to. The responsibility is on us. You have to be thirsty. You have to desire it. Where he said, uh, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. So it's not a, it's a, not a blanket <coughs> gift. You have to be thirsty for that gift. Okay, and so, uh, unfortunately, this time of year, a lot of people give lip service to the Christ child, but their gifts are their priorities. And the greatest gift that has been given to man is obviously the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, but he's given to the ones who are thirsty for it. You have to receive the gift. So I want to give you some thoughts about the gift of God uh, this morning. And the first one is the Lord Jesus is the gift of God to be the Savior. Now, Paul wants to make sure that we know that it is a true gift. Anybody knows that you live life, somebody gives you something. If you know, have a history, you begin to, why are they giving this to me? You know, sometimes you, you do want that and you kind of hold it up. You got to take a scissors and cut all the strings. Because some gifts have strings attached. But Paul wanted to make sure we knew this in Romans 5. He said, free gift. Free gift. That's kind of like saying wet water. Okay, but it's redundant, but yet he's verifying, making sure we know that it is a free gift. Now, at the moment of uh, the new birth, 
Like when you turn the ignition key, there are several things that happen in the car simultaneously. Okay, at the new birth, you have the gift of grace, the gift of eternal life, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Those are all given at that moment. Boom, just like that. And the Lord doesn't want us to neglect those gifts. Then he's given us something physical to verify those gifts, something visible that verifies the gifts, and that's the gift of the words of God. Okay, so that's a gift. Okay, those are gifts given. Okay, if you would, go backwards to John 1, verse 1. Okay, here you'll see the Bible practice. Okay, often if you write Christian colleges and ask them questions, you know, when I was researching the idea of the King James Bible, if it's true or not, I would write to schools and they would have in their statement of faith and they'd say the word of God, but they'd put an uppercase W and what that was is they, they were feigning respect to the Bible and I'm telling you, they were feigning. It was a fake respect because they do not respect the King James Bible. Okay, now, in the Bible, the practice, when, it, when it's an uppercase W, like in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was a word, and word was with God, and word was God. It's an uppercase three times. You'll find in verse 14, it, it's a no-brainer of who he's talking about. In verse 14, and the word was made flesh. Okay, now that's found three more times in the Bible, by all of them written by the Apostle John, John 1.1, 1, 1, 1 John 5.7. That is probably the clearest verse on, one, the Trinity or the Godhead, and two, the similarity or the connection between the flesh and blood word of God, Jesus Christ, and the paper and ink word of God, Bible. They are synonymous. Okay, and then Revelation 19, 13 is when the word of God comes down, Jesus Christ at the second coming. Okay, and so in the Bible, the Bible practice is when it's an uppercase W, that is flesh and blood, word of God, Jesus Christ. Now flesh and bones because a resurrected body doesn't have the blood. Okay, the lowercase W in the Bible is paper and ink, word of God for today. Okay, now, throughout history, here we are, you know, about 6,000 years from Adam, and we got us a Bible, and there's a big fight in the schools, is it the Word of God? You know, they believe God inspired a book and lost it, okay? And so, it started off with Adam, where he and God had a personal fellowship. So, their family devotions was one verse. See that tree, don't eat it. See those trees, you can eat them. Okay, next day, let's get out your one-sentence Bible, and let's have family devotions. Eve says, well, I just don't get anything out of this. Okay, and so they had family devotions, and that's all they had. Okay, and then, okay, time marches on. For 2,500 years, how did God speak to people? How did he get his words known to them? Well, various ways, angels, prophets, judges, priests, Dreams, visions. Okay, so then the first guy that actually put something in print probably was Elihu, where he wrote out Job. And then Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So that's about 1500 BC. So for 2,500 years, nobody had a written copy of any scripture. Time marches on, 400 BC. God stops writing in a book for the Old Testament, and Jesus defined the scriptures. For his day to be the law, the Psalms, and the prophets. And that's how a Jew would divide the Old Testament. It's the exact same 39 books we have in our Old Testament. Now they put them in a different chronological order, but it is the same 39. Enoch's not in there. The book of Jasher's not in there. Okay, these people are looking for this mysterious book. They can't even figure out the ones we have. Okay, then in the New Testament... You have the 27, and it matches Isaiah. Isaiah is the largest book in the Bible with chapters. Okay, and so uh, that's the Bible we have today. So then that Bible was in Hebrew and then Greek, and then right after the, where the Christians are first called, 
Christ, or the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. It moves up to Syria. The first Bible, where it's all the same language, was called the Syrian or the Peshuta Bible. Okay, then there's a Latin Bible. And then you go through the Dark Ages in church history. And then after the Reformation, you have a German Bible. And that's when English was starting to come to its peak. And then we have an English Bible. Okay, and that's seven languages. Now, today, every airline, every commercial airline pilot has to know English. English is the absolute standard of time and location, Greenwich, England, and the equator. The, the British, the BTU on the furnace is British thermal units. Okay, and so English is the standard. So here we have now. We have a perfect copy of the Bible for God today. It's better than a Greek. Oh, sorry. Should I say that? Okay, because it's available today. Now, we're told con continually that it's out of date, and we need something more updated. Okay, and so the closest between the flesh and blood word of God and the paper and ink word of God are inseparable. Both give light and life. Both empower the new birth. Both have two natures. Jesus Christ, God, man. Bible, inspired, written by man. Both can be destroyed. Jesus Christ, death. You can burn a Bible, but both live forever. You see, both. Now here's where the Christians drop it. Both are counterfeited. Okay, now, here's how you can get them. You say, now you tell me, is Jesus Christ called the Word of God? Yes. Is Jesus Christ perfect and holy today? Yes. Therefore, there has to be a perfect and holy Bible today. Is Jesus Christ counterfeited? Does it not say there are many Christ? Yes. Okay, if that's true, would there not be many counterfeited Bibles? Yes, that's true also. Very logical. Both Jesus Christ and the Bible have an authority and power, but it's a quiet authority and power. It's not in your face authority and power. It's a very quiet authority and power. When people cuss, they don't say Muhammad blankety blank. They don't say Buddha blankety blank. They'll say Jesus Christ. You know, I heard that in a grocery, in a shoe store. And ladies, Jesus, and I said, well, he's a good savior. She said, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you throw that out at him. Okay, but but the constant maligning of the Bible is that it, the King James is out of date. Well, let's check that out and let's see. I, I we ought to enjoy Jesus Christ and we ought to enjoy the Word of God. The common people heard him gladly. So I'm going to run through common sayings. Okay? The common people heard him gladly. Now we will hear these things often. Some of these things will ring a bell with you. I'm not going to run through all of them because I put about a thousand of them in the reference Bible and in the center column where it's italicized words, where it's found in the Bible. But we can start at the beginning of the Bible. The common saying is, my name is Mud. Okay, so that's Adam created out of the dirt. And then a snake in the grass showed up in a garden, and he deceived a woman. She took the words out of God's mouth. But you see, God heard through the grapevine that something was going on, because she probably took a grape, and when she ate it, her lips got red, and so people still put red lipstick on their lips, because back in Genesis chapter 3, in the next chapter... Cain tried to get blood out of a turnip. God wanted it blood from a lamb, but Cain tried to get blood out of a turnip. That didn't work. And so two chapters later, Moses or Noah warned this world, don't miss the boat. But you see, they didn't have the sense of coming out of the rain. And so later on, uh, Esau's birthright wasn't worth a hill of beans to him because he sold it for a bowl of pottage, and he told Jacob, don't spill the beans on me. And then later on, when the blessing was supposed to go to Jacob, and Isaac was wanting to give it to Esau, and Rebekah lost faith, she pulled the wool over his eyes. Because it smelled funny to Isaac. 
said, it didn't smell like Esau. So something's fun, funny smell in here. And he doubted five times in that passage. Later on, when Simeon and Levi pulled that trick on those um, fellows who were trying to marry Dinah, I, Jacob said, man, you have caused a stink. Do we hear that anymore nowadays? You see, and then Joseph had these dreams because he was living in a dreamland. But then there was Tamar who turned a trick on her father-in-law. And then later on, Rahab threw the scarlet thread out the window because it's a red light district and it's the scarlet sin. Even that crowd is following what the Bible says. You keep coming down, and then Moses' mom put him in a little bull rush, and he was up a creek without a paddle. But then later on, when God called him to the ministry, he was beating around a bush. He saw that bush wasn't consumed. But before they left the country, he had several plagues, and the Egyptians were in the dark. But he told those Jews, I want you to paint the town red tonight. Make sure you put that blood in the doorpost. And then when they chased the Jews, they were in a fog. And then when they went down, they were sunk. And they had lead in their pants. you find all this in the book, and i got all the reference where we can start this. But later on, somebody got all excited and said, holy smoke! That occurred at Mount Sinai because the mountain was on fire. And there was smoke there. But later on, when they lost faith, and, and uh, then Aaron had this golden calf, and Harry Carey said, holy cow! That's where that comes from. Later on, Balaam was told to do something by God, but he was between a rock and a hard place, and he wasn't paying attention because he was stubborn as a mule when that Democratic mascot talked to him. He got a stray from the horse's mouth, or at least the horse's cousin. But you know, that guy is slower than a seven-year itch. You'll find that in Deuteronomy. It's reference to a plague in the tribulation time period. There was a guy named Ehug that he gave a left-handed compliment to Eglon. Where he was a left-handed guy, and he took that stab and stub it, stabbed it in that guy, and, and the fat enclosed around. It's a good way to wait, bad way to lose a dagger. The next chapter, J.L., she took a tent stake, and she nailed Sisera. Man, he was dead as a hammer when she got none. He was stuck. Now, Samson, he had a bone to pick with those Philistines because he took the jawbone of an ass and he killed about a thousand of them. But he later on had a bad hair day. As Absalom had a bad hair day, and Absalom was out on the limb. I think he was out there with Shirley MacLaine. You know, and now later on, uh, he got his lights knocked out. They poked his eyes out. And then Jezebel, she went to the dogs. See, but then in Job chapter 11, I saw this Pentecostal kid who was in prison one time, and he had born to be wild. And I told him, you got a Bible verse in your arm. And I showed where it was. And it says, a man's born like under a wild ass's colt. And I implied that he was, yeah. And he said, yeah, I am kind of stubborn. Yeah, you are, aren't you? You got that right out of the Bible. People mocking God, mocking Jesus Christ. Christian professors mocking his book today. Guess who gets the last laughed? Psalm 2, verse 4, God gets the last laugh. Because Jesus Christ is going to come back and he's going to kick. Smite them in the hinder parts, it says in Psalm 40, 78. You know, and a lot of times I hear somebody will throw out these common sayings, you know, on the cuff. And I'll throw out, hey, do you know you quoted the Bible? <laughs> if it's hot out there, it's hot as hell. I said, hell's real hot. I hope you're not going there. Guys in jail would ask me what time it was, and I'd say, it's time to get saved. And they'd stop asking me what time it was. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, it says, money answereth all things, so you had the common saying, money talks. A little birdie told me this in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And God compared the United Nations to as a drop in a bucket in Isaiah chapter four, uh, 40. Are we seeing eye to eye on some of these things? Yeah, that's Isaiah 52. You see, and this guy's a big shot. He's a big wheel. You'll find that in Ezekiel chapter 10. Now there was a drunken grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, because Nebuchadnezzar got stumped. That one time, remember he got stumped? You know, where the tree, they put a you know, banner around the stump. And so later on, Nebuch uh, his grandson was at a drunken party, and he saw the handwriting written on the wall. And boy, when he saw that, his knees were knocking. 
I mean, that's how it goes. And later on in Hosea chapter 7, Hosea said Ephraim is a cake not turned. I'll often point that out to the Mormons when they witness and talk to you. And I'll ask them what tribe they come from. They always answer the same, Ephraim. Then I'll show them Hosea 7, 8. Look here, <coughs> Ephraim is a cake not turned. I said, do you get that? And they said, no, I don't get that. I said, that means you're half baked. <laughs> and <yeah. laughs> enjoy that one for a while. Jonah was sure down in the mouth, wasn't he? He went to hell and back. In Matthew chapter 13, in the parable of the sower and the seed, God likened the devil to birds. Hence, if a guy has a bunch of devils, he's a bird brain. He's gone cuckoo. He's got bats in the belfry. You know, but if a person really questions God or challenges God, he just, he just might take them out like he did Ananias and Sapphira. And upon their death, what do they do? They wound them up. They put them, well, I'm about winding this up. We're getting towards the ends of it. In Acts, after Acts, you have Peter as the main character at the beginning, and Paul is the main character by the time you get in the middle, so God robbed Peter to pay Paul. You get all this from the Bible. In Galatians, you have the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine items of the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians got nine letters. Galatians is the ninth letter. And if you have the fruit of the Spirit, you can live on cloud nine. You got any friends in high places? Ezekiel or Ephesians 6.12, that's not pretty good if you've got friends in high places because that's demonic beings. And in, in a Revelation, you have hot and cold and lukewarm. You ever give somebody a cold feet? You ever get cold feet about something or you give somebody a cold shoulder? That's what the cold is talking about there. But sometimes you get a, fro <coughs> a frog in your throat. And you'll find that in Revelation 16 where the Antichrist has three unclean spirit-like frogs come out of his mouth. And that's why, you know, you have little green things like Geico, you know, you know, all that stuff, and all these little, they're following the book. They don't know it. You get to the back of the Bible, and somebody's pulled out of a frying pan and thrown into the fire. When an angel tells them, go jump in the lake. And they say, boy, I'm in hot water. Because you got fired. You see, when you get fired, when somebody gets fired from a job, nobody takes a torch, blowtorch, and, you know, heat them up. They just lost their job. And the devil gets fired when he loses his job, and God throws him in the bottom of his pit. But, you know, the believers, they're going to say, hats off to you, Jesus. Why, are you going to take your crowns and throw them at his feet, I do believe? Because he is worthy of our honor. Amen. That blessed book is amazing. Amen. I think I've hit maybe... 10% of the ones we could have hit. Now, one of the big beefs against the King James Bible is it's out of date. Okay, one of the big things that um, they always tell us that the new Bibles are easier to understand. Now, when they do that, they'll usually give you three references where the new Bibles are easier to read than the King James. They'll usually give you three, and they think that's good enough to satisfy. And I'm there, here to tell you, they are easy to read. The reason why is there's less verses. Matthew 17, 21, you don't have to read it. It's not there. Okay, and so that's what makes it easier. <laughs> okay, but so I have given you three places to do the opposite. Okay, in, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, I do believe that the New York Giants are probably going to have a football game today. And... But you see, giants is only found in the King James Bible. The New Bibles, we have to, we have to, we have to, you know, call up Eli Manning and say, "No more giants." It's now the New York Nephilims, okay? Or in baseball, the San Francisco Giants. It's the San Francisco Nephilims. Now, okay, in a couple of weeks, how long are you sticking around here, Lucas? About a week. He's going to be heading toward the Negev. In, when he leaves, because in Genesis 12, verse 6, it says, Abraham went south. Now, the new Bibles have really updated and made that more plain. It's now north, they give east and west instead of south. They've made that. They've really helped us out on those things. Okay, now, if you had some meal this morning, or anybody have some eggs, maybe over easy this morning? Okay, in Job chapter 6, verse 6, it says, Is there any taste in the white of the egg? Well, obviously there's not. That's why he put salt, pepper, and Tabasco sauce on it. But 
the NIV has really helped us out on this because you don't have to order two eggs over easy. You can order one sap of the mallow. I mean, go to the restaurant and say, hey, could I give the slimy juice of a marshmallow this morning? That's the Jehovah Witness Bible. But the Revised Standard is the best. The slime of per slain. Please, over easy, easy on the slime. You know, and so that's the really easy, understandable new Bibles. Okay? Now I want to hit some archaic words. Now, this is a big beef, and we can enjoy our Bible because this book is so far advanced. This book gave words in 1600 that are well known today. Now, unfortunately, I was going to give you a handout, but we ran out of toner, so I got three, so I can have an auction. Anybody want this one? Five dollars, five dollars, ten, (laughs) ten. So we can give it to you afterwards. So I'm going to pretend there's a guy, he, he's uh, loafing around on a Saturday, his dad, you know, dad, he's got two, three kids, you know, and he's on the couch, and, and he's watching the television. In Matthew 17, verse 9, I'm going to try to do this without the handouts, Jesus said, he charged them saying, tell the vision to no man. So there's television prophesied in the Bible. That's just for fun. Okay, so... He's got the TV on, and he's going to watch a major league baseball game. Now, the word league is found in Joshua chapter 9, verse 7, but it's only used in the King James Bible. The New Bible has changed it to treaty, so it's the major treaty baseball organization, or the National Football Treaty. League is only found in the King James Bible. Now, on this day, he's watching the San Francisco Giants. We've already covered that. But they're playing the Seattle Mariners. In Jonah 1, verse 5, Mariners is only found in the King James Bible. All of them change it to sailors. So now he's, their San Francisco Nephilims are playing the Seattle Sailors. But those professional players, athletes, when they go to the airport, they're going to look for a Concourse. You ever see that in an airplane, in an airline, in an airport? Concourse. That's Proverbs 1, verse 20, 21. She crieth in a chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gate. So you go to the concourse, and that's where your gate is located. The New Bibles, they've really helped us out. So when you go to the airport, you look for the wall or the noisy streets. They don't use the word concourse in that one. Now this guy's sitting there watching TV and an advertisement comes up. You'll find that in Numbers 24 verse 14. But none of the new Bibles uses the word advertisement. They use the word warn and advise. Now when an advertisement comes up, a college game was advertised. College. Does anybody hear that word anymore? College? Do, Do they use that word? College? The New Bibles have made that more clear for us. It's now the word quarter. You don't get a college degree, you get a quarter degree. You'll find that in the NIV and the Revised Version. Okay, and so a football game's up, and a kid walks in, so boy, Dad, I sure hope they kick their high. And Mom says, now watch it, son, watch it, don't you say that. Well, kick them in a hind end. Okay, I already covered that one in Psalm 78. But the kid's sitting there, and the dad says, did you take a bath? You stink. Well, did you know that stink is only found in a King James Bible? The new Bible is he should say, boy, you are odious. I can really, you're obnoxious. Okay, stink is only found in the King James Bible. Okay, so dad's got the uh, channel flipper in his hand, so he's flipping channels. There's a tennis match on at the time. And one of the guys serves the ball up, and it, it grazes over the net, and the guy at the, at the net yells, let! And the kid said, did he say net? No, he said let. What is that, crazy? Are you crazy? 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7 is the very first verse that was used to justify updating because the Bible uses the word let for hindered there and they think they ought to update it and change it and then change a bunch of other things while they did it. 
But Wimbledon still uses let. Out of date, archaic. I mean, what a thing. And Mrs. walks in and says, Honey, I think Jeopardy's on. And I like to watch Jeopardy. Well, Jeopardy's only found in the King James Bible. The new Bibles have made that more. Now the game show is called Danger. Now make sure that you answer your questions right with a question. <laughs> but Dad says, let's go shopping. But before we go shopping, I want to turn on the television and check the forecast. You'll find that in Daniel Okay, chapter 11. So he's going to check the forecast, but all the new Bibles don't use the word forecast. They use, let's see, what are they going to use to forecast on this one? In Daniel chapter 11, verse 24, they're going to not use, where to go on here? They're going to use plot and devise instead of forecast, because nobody watches the forecast. And so dad says to his son, hey, uh, would you grab my coat? It's in the closet. But the new Bibles don't use the word closet. They change it to room or inner room. And he goes out to the car and he starts the engine. Ezekiel 26, verse 9. Well, engine, yeah, that engine, that's, that's found in, in the pure Bible. It's not found in the new Bibles. It's found in the pure Bible. In the, old, in the newer Bibles, you've got to turn on the battering rams instead of the engine. Or your search engine on a computer, you know, it's got to be battering rams. So these are so out of date. He wants to hear the traffic report. Does anybody hear that word anymore? Traffic, you know, human trafficking, drug trafficking. Traffic is only found in Ezekiel 28, verse 15. The new updated Bibles is trade. So you want to hear the trade report. And he throws the king's, his keys to his son. He said, why don't you drive? You got your license on you? He said, Dad, don't you know license? That's out of date. That's only found in the King James Bible. Man, come on, Dad. It's now permission. You got your permission on you? And he says, well, let's run over to the post office. In Esther chapter 3, verse 13, it says the letters were sent by post. <clears throat> well, does anybody go to the post office? Do you understand that these days? I think you ought to go to the courier place. Because the courier is where you get your dispatches. You know, a little envelope. That's what the new Bibles have done. And well, he went and he got a check in the mail. Whew. Let's go to the bank and see if the teller will cash this check for me. Teller, what do you mean? He said, he told Abraham in Genesis 15, 5, go tell the stars. All the new Bibles say count. So when you go to the bank, it's not a teller anymore. It's a counter. That's the better word. That's the more updated word. The teller counts the currency for the person. So then they say, hey, Dad, you got some cash. Let's go over to Walmart. He said, what is that? In Isaiah 23, verse 3, it says that she is a mart of nations. All the new Bibles change it to marketplace. So Walmart, Kmart, Mini Mart, Food Mart, Gas Mart, Smoke Mart, all out of date. Nobody understands this book anymore. It's right in front of them. Now, when he walks into Walmart, he said, man, look at all this merchandise. It's from top to bottom. New Bibles don't use merchandise. They change that. And then, he's, and then one of the kids said, uh, man, then he says, you know, I like to get a, a lazy boy. I, I hope they got some furniture that they sell here. Furniture is another word that's only found in the King James Bible. And one kid says, Dad, I got some stuff I want to get. Now, you don't hear that word ever. That is so difficult, so misunderstanding. The word stuff, you find it in Luke chapter 17, and all the new Bibles change the word stuff to possessions or goods. And the kid says, I'm hungry, I want some vittles. Only find that in the King James Bible, as far as that goes. And the daughter, she decided, Dad, I'm going to go to, what was it, Dad? I, I can't go to college anymore. i got to go to quarter. I want to go to quarter and get a science degree. Well, so you can't get a science degree because science is only found in the King James Bible. 
Daniel 1 verse 4 and 2 1 Timothy 6.20 where it says, Beware of science falsely so-called. All of them change it to knowledge. So you don't get a science degree, you get a knowledge degree. That's so helpful. There are four things that's trying to be, trying to be crammed down Americans' throats. And they pretend to use science. Science is only found in the King James Bible. Is the evolutionary theory, that's pseudoscience. And in the Christian world, the textual criticism, they call that a science. That's a fake science. In the transgender movement, that's a fake science. And the entire climate change movement is pseudoscience. Every bit of it. You see, and there's only one Bible in English that tells you and I, watch out. Now, when she's in the science, uh, I'm sorry, in the knowledge department of the quarter, they have to do proofs. They can't do experiments because experiment is only found in this book. And you know what God's going to do at the judgment? If you would look in John chapter 12. God at the judgment is going to use two sources for authority. And both are words. But where do these words come from? In John 12, verse 48, he says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him, the word. That I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So when, when God says to Gabriel, book him, Dano, he's going to have a book there. And he's going to then, if you would, go to Luke chapter 19. Verse 22. He's going to say, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. People say these sayings and they don't know they're getting it from a Bible. That book is a quiet influence. It's powerful. Several years ago, anybody remember the um, country magazine, high gloss magazines coming out of Wisconsin? Beautiful magazines. They had in there about common sayings in America. And they took them back to the pilgrims. And I wrote them, and I said, you need to take it back a little further to the Bible. And I gave a bunch of them. They didn't publish it, but that's where the authority comes from. That book. And that book isn't out of date. That book, 2,000 years ago, said someday the word gay... So I found one time in the Bible, some the, someday the word gay is not going to have a good connotation in James chapter 2. Yeah. That book told us that 2,000 years ago. So when we got this book, we've got something that's amazing. That's why he said every idle word that men shall say, they'll give an account in the day of judgment. So often, just on a spontaneous witness, if you hear somebody you know, utter something like this, take the opportunity. Right on the spot. It, you'll be amazed at the result or the reaction you'll get. I was in a hardware store. I hadn't seen this farmer for quite a while. Lost man. It's probably three or four years. And he said, oh, hey, Dave, how's the world treating you? And I said, pretty raunchy. He laughed. I said, but the Lord sure is treating me good. And man, the look on his face was like, oh, 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 why did you have to bring that up? I was in a store buying a bunch of tarps. And as, there's a guy taking the money and a young kid behind him. And I said the amount of tarps. He said, holy. Now, he didn't use the Bible word dung. He used the modern up-to-date word. And when he said that, I said, you know, last I checked, it wasn't real holy. And the guy taking the money laughed. He said, got you there. He got you there. (laughs) 
And you had to think about that. But you know, if your ears are in tune, you'll hear people say this every day. And it's an opportunity to show it. You sit back, and like David said, I am in awe of thy word. I'm in awe of this book. You see, the flesh and blood word of God has given us a gift for us to enjoy. He gives us eternal life. The paper and ink word of God is also for us to enjoy. And we can rest in this blessed book and defend it when the Lord wants it defended. And the Lord will turn around and cover our back. If you would, let's try a couple verses for that one. In Proverbs chapter 27 and then Psalms 119, look in verse 42. And you don't, you don't do this angrily. You enjoy yourself and rest in the authority of Jesus Christ. Rest in the authority of the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 42. Well, we got the word so, so we got to read a verse in front of it. So he says, Let thy mercies come also upon, uh, unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. So when somebody reproaches the word to me, I trust in that book, I got an answer for him. Now here's what the Lord does in Proverbs 27 Verse 11, he says, My son, be wise, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him that reproacheth me. This is the devil reproaching God about you. And when you and I give the right answer, God in heaven is going, He got you there! And God is enjoying that. You see, where God has inspired his words and has preserved them clear to today. And we can rest in that fact. Okay, let's pray. Lord, I do pray and ask that you'd help us to be in awe of thy word. And Lord, you said that Saul, you took the kingdom from Saul is because he transgressed against you, the Lord, and against your word, both interchangeably. And Lord, I pray you'd help us just to rest and to uh, believe your words. And we thank you for them because this book is so far advanced that we can just rest in that fact and love you more as a result of it. We ask the Spirit of God that he would enlighten our eyes so that we might see these things in the Bible and we might be a good witness to the common people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're